Hello! <laughs> it's Mr. Ed here on a kind of chilly morning, probably about uh, 48, 50 degrees, something like that. And I'm out in the field. I wanted to come look and see uh, what's what's getting ready to bloom or how things are progressing in their spring. Spring's what, two days away? Today's the 18th, so 20th is the first day of spring. And I want to check on how the privet is going and what the tallow is doing and look look right here look at this here is our privet look at that right there we got those blooms are just about ready to start getting bigger <laughs> they're all over the privet trees and this this is our, our one of our first major major nectar flows that's going to be coming and it, it it'll it'll get here Sometime, sometime about mid-April, this stuff ought to be blooming out pretty good. And hopefully we're going to have a, a great year of it. But as, also along with the privet that I want to look, look at, I want to look at the tallow as well. Well, look, right here we got blackberries are just coming out, starting to flower up in there. Let's see if I zoom in on that. Here you can see all the white tips just showing up here. All this, all this. I mean, we have we have stuff blooming all over right now. But I I was just wanted to come out to the yard and see the uh, like I said the tallow is what I was really really interested in. Now today is the 18th of March and on the 16th of March last year is when we got our that freak freeze that just burnt everything all of our towels and so here's a tallow tree right here and you can see the new leaf growth coming out on it on this one as well so this is exactly the state that our tallow was in last year that our freeze hit and it just burned everything and, and because of that, we, our nectar flow was just, for me, it was a quarter of what we usually get as far as our honey. But the tallow is looking very good right now. So what's the plan for today? I'm telling I like, I like seeing, this is, this is all really good stuff right in here. And this is just one of our, uh, the, the, the apiary, the yards that we have here at the Abbey. Um, and so I, I'm so encouraged by what I see right now. And we do have a nectar flow going on right now because the bees are bringing in nectar like crazy in all of our other yards. It's even here too. It's just so exciting to see when you open up the box and start looking in frames, new nectar in your box uh, because it's just going to stimulate the, the growth of bees and our boxes are just going to be swelling up with the number of bees. And that's what we're doing today, which is the second part of making our splits. All right, now I gotta go through the gate and it's gonna be, oh, it opened up. <laughs> now if it'll close. All right, got that job done. So Charlie, today, Charlie and I are going to be starting out at the same spot that we did last week um, at the St. John Yard. And last week, we went through all of our yards. We have 10 out yards. And after going through all of them, um, well, let's, let me back up a little. We started um, in November when I broke all of our uh, hives down to two bodies because I go through winter with two bodies. We, we had 152 hives when, at, in November. So this year, when I started doing our splits and counting everything, uh, we wound up with 113, I think it's 113 hives total. So we lost 30 something hives. And doing the, doing the math count on that, if we, we lost, I think 39 hives and we had 152. So we had about a 26% a um, loss over the winter which I mean, it's not bad since uh, we don't treat, uh, I don't feed, uh, I don't do anything. I'll, I just put the bees out there and let the bees do what the bees need to do. 
and then I do what I need to do, which is to go collect the honey. <laughs> so not bad, 26%. We can come back with that with our splits, no problem. Get ourselves built up to another 160, 180 hives, and we're good to go for our honey production. So out of the 113 that we did, 51 of them, I used a double screen dividing board on those. Uh, 21 of them, I found swarm cells in them so that I could use to make my splits right then and there. And then 41 of them, uh, they just weren't developed enough where I could even drop in a board. So today, what we're gonna be doing today is revisiting the yards. It'll take the rest of this week and um, revisiting them. And what I'm gonna show you today is what happens uh, seven days after you drop in a screen dividing board. And what, what we are hoping to find and expecting to find is the formation of queen emergency cells, um, which are the queen cells that the bees produce when they don't have a queen in the box. And so when we put our double screen dividing board in the box, it stimulates the situation of queenless, even though the queen is in the top box, uh, the bees will produce emergency cells so that they can have a queen in their box. So hopefully, by the grace of God, <laughs> we're gonna go into our boxes today and the rest of this week, find emergency cells, and then we can actually then complete the splits, that is to separate the, the two hive bodies, the top box and the bottom box, and then from one hive create two hives. So Charlie is going to be here very shortly. I'm just about at the van right now and I'm going to get over to the honey house, start loading up the equipment that we're going to need for today and then he and I are going to pick up this video along with you and we're going to show you the findings of what I got in our beehives. Let's go wrangle up some splits today. Here we are Eight days later, because we came out here last Monday, today is Monday again, and we're on the, the same box that we first started with. Just a little recap of what we did. We took our double screen dividing board, and because we had enough bees in both the top and bottom box, we set our dividing board in between the boxes, and our original entrance to the hive is over here. And we took the, the hive entrance right here and we put it to the back so the top box their entrance is going this way the bottom box is going this way and hopefully by creating that separation between the two hives that the box whichever one the queen is in whichever box that does not have the queen in it they will produce emergency cells given the situation that there is brood in that box young enough for them to form an emergency cell now if there wasn't brood in the in the box young enough and we open up the box and we don't find any emergency cells there's only two possibilities one the queen is in the box which is why they didn't produce any cells or there wasn't brood in there young enough to produce a, an emergency cell so I, I generally assume that in the top box is my queen because 90 percent of the time that's where she is so that's what I run down under the assumption that she's in this top box so here we are eight days later, and what I'm getting ready to do is take my top box, and one of the questions I always get, well, what do you have to do, how far away do you have to move that box? I could put it right here, it doesn't matter, because the, the bees are going to, um, that, that are in this box, if there are any field bees in this box, they're gonna return to their entrance, which was behind it, and all that's gonna be left in that box are high bees, and those bees, they've never been out the box, so it doesn't matter. When they start venturing out, they'll set their GPSs, and that will be their entrance. So in this case, I'm just going to move my box to my stand right here, and then we're going to go ahead and search through the bottom box uh, to find, see if we can find any emergency cells. So let's find out what this box did for us. So we take took the lid off and you can see we got we got good bees up here in the top 
Now remember, our temperature right now, it's right around 50 degrees. So the bees aren't flying really good. So what I do, is I'm gonna just take my, separate them off. Take this box and move it. Right here. Now, if our queen was in this box and if we find emergency cells in this box, the split is done. So now we're going to go ahead and remove our screen board. And Charlie, come show them all the bees that are in that bottom box. These bees that are on the top, I'm just going to knock them down into the bottom box. It won't matter. Um, as long as my queen isn't running around here, that's fine. So we're going to separate this out. Knock these bees off. And now we go through that box looking for emergency cells. There are a ton of bees. That's 10 frames of bees in this box. So we're just going to give them a little smoke. And I forgot to bring my frame holder, so I'm just going to have to set the frames on the side. Generally, when we're going to start looking for our, our cells in these center five boxes because that's where our queen had more than likely been laying up in that area right there because while the boxes are still joined together she's traveling back and forth through the top and bottom boxes laying in the center of the hives. This is not going to be on the outside. seeing some cells now. Remember, if we don't if we don't see any cells, there's always a possibility that our queen was in this box. But given that there's no new brood in here, I'm always under the impression yeah it's there is something in something there. in there. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's cap. I mean, there's there's there's, there's jelly, jelly in, in there. there. That's not a cap one. Let's see if we can find a cap one. So that was one. It just wasn't finished cap. Well, they they're definitely starting to make a queen. Yeah. So she's she's gonna be in that other box. So we got some uncapped larva up here. So they should have had uh, larva in, in this box young enough for them to make cells. That isn't a drone cell, so that, that is one right there. That is a peanut of a cell, though. Let's see. some cells. We're going to go ahead and look in that other box to make sure our queen was in there. I'm going to put one more frame. And there's no more brood. This is all 
nectars. Good for him. I see the nectar. They're bringing in nectar right now. So let's put this back together and we're going to open up the next box. That's the box that was on top. Now let's open up the box that we just took off. And one of the, one of the deals you, you, you're going to notice immediately is the amount of bees in this hive compared to the amount of bees in that hive. And remember what I said about when we, when we put in our, our dividing board up in the top, any of the field bees that were in this top box, when they come out, they're going to go around and go back into this, their original entrance. So y you expect to have a, a lot of bees in this bottom box. And the only bees that are going to be in this box are the hive bees that were in this box that when we took it off. So it, it, it really makes it very easy to search for your queen because you look, there's only one, two, three, four, five frames of bees in this box, but I mean, I know my queen's in this box. Um, so it's going to be pretty easy to find her on five frames of bees as opposed to finding her in ten frames of bees on that other box. So we're going to pull out these frames. You think, you think she's got enough stores in there? That's why I really never worry about the, the body that doesn't have the, the queen. Uh, especially right now, our nectar flow is really, really starting and I saw new nectar in there. So the old queen, because she really doesn't have a working force of, of gatherers, it, it is important to have stores in the hive for the brew that's coming so here we go look at this we got a we got a cell right here so we're gonna we're gonna look through and see if we find our our queen and if not um if we find it we're gonna drop this frame in there because i want to add there's another one right there i want to um make sure that box has got a queen in there And I'm looking for new brood in here as well. Because this may be... Now, so I would, I would say that our queen is in that box. Because now we've got four emergency cells right here. So we're going we're gonna to do a reversal on this one. So we got emergency cells. That's the fourth one that I saw. And you notice there is no new brood in any of this. There's another one right here. And we got two more peanuts right Look there. Look on the bottom and of down the here. Oh yeah, so we got, so, so in this case, our queen is definitely in that other box, which is the scenario that I don't want to happen because having our queen in the other box is going to, um, since she, now she's got hive bees and worker bees, that hive, that hive could potentially swarm again uh, just in a matter of a week or so, we could have swarm cells in there. So we don't want that scenario to happen. So we need to steal bees from, from her. What I, what I need to do to do that is actually to put this box on this space right here, put the screen board in again, because that will then have all the field bees that are in this box right now returning to this box right here because it's going to be on the bottom. And we're going to create the same situation that we have right now. A few bees with the queen and a lot of bees with the queen that is to come. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to move this box to the side, set this one on this stand right here, and then put the board back in it and then join them back up together. What I have to do now is take this box, which I know our queen is in this box, because we have all the emergency cells in that box. 
And now I'm going to take it, move it over to the side. That is a lot. Of bees. That's a lot of bees. Take it, move it over to the side. I want to make sure my queen is not on this bottom board. Right. She's not there. I'm going to take this box, which was on the top before. Set it on my screen board right there. Because remember, this is the one that has emergency cells in it. But I need to have more bees in this box and less bees in this box. So now, I'll take my double board, put it back on, and now, take this box, which is full of bees and our old queen, and put it right on top of our dividing board. Now all the bees that are coming out of here, most of these are going to be field bees, and when they come out, they're going to leave this box, remember it's separated, they're going to leave this box, come around to the front, and go into this box. So now, the number of bees in this box is going to decrease, and the number of bees in this box is going to increase. And that's how we're going to equalize these boxes out again. Get fewer bees up here, more bees down here, and our queen on the top. The reason we want to get our queen on the top is that we can move her off of the original stand, this spot right here, move her away, and then by moving her away, when we move her away, any of the field bees that have reformed in this box since next week when I come back, they will want to come back to this entrance right here. So we actually will steal bees from our old queen one more time. And then at that point, she'll just basically have field bees, uh, um, hive bees in her hive to tender, and then, then she's going to catch up. So that's it. We, we've rectified the situation here. It's still going to take a, a week or so uh, before it gets worked out, but in any case, this hive is basically split, so the next time I come, all I have to do is take this box and move it over here. So Charlie tells me, he says, you know, Jeff, you really didn't have to do it that way. You could have just taken the box that had all the bees in it and our queen in it, which was on the bottom right there, moved it over to the new location, dropped the box that had just the emergency cells in it down, and we still would have gotten our field bees to go back. And he's absolutely correct. We could have done it that way. So Charlie, scratch, knock one up for Charlie too. Thank you. <laughs> right, so we're going through that top box now, and we're looking for brood or our queen or emergency cells. We're just going to see what we got. And it may be that this box we just have to be and they just weren't ready yet. Because the number of bees in that bottom box isn't so strong, and this one in this top box, it's all right, but not great. I'm just going to remove that screen board and let this hive alone for another week or two. There was another scenario. So we took the screen board out and we joined the, the colony back up to get uh, together again and then I'll go back in in two weeks on that one and find out what's going on with that hive. So here's another double board that we put in here. We're going to set this top on the side. And we are going to go through the bottom board and go through the bottom box and look for emergency cells that hopefully will form. So we 
got some cups being formed. Look at all the nectar that these girls are bringing in right here. All this is all brand new nectar. We've got some cups right there. All right, we got some peanut cells right here. Look at this. We got two emergency cells right there. And that's what I, I like. Minimally two cells in a box to make the split. I like to have three or four. It doesn't matter. You could have eight of them. It'd be fine. But two is what I really like to find in there and leave in that box. And then it looks like some down here. No. So remember, if if you find emergency cells, that means that box was did not have the queen in. Here you go. Here we got another one right here, right there. So we got four of them. We don't need to look anymore. So we know that this box is absolutely fine. It'll it'll have a queen in it. Within a, a few days, we'll have a queen in this box, and then a few days after that, she'll go get mated, and then I'll be back in here in, in about two weeks, three weeks for sure, and make sure that we have new brood in this box. So this box is split, so we're going to go ahead and... Um, we know our queen is in this box because we had emergency cells in this box, so we're going to go ahead and set up this box right here. You see where our box was? And I'm just going to move it right here, and that'll be good enough. This box is heavy. Drop our lid on it. drop our inner cover and lid on this one. And the only thing we have to do now is put a piece of orange tape on this box right here and blue tape on this box marking this is our our new queen this is our old queen and then in two to three weeks I'll come back and and look in this box make sure it has uh, brood, new brood in. Now in this scenario, we had swarm cells in the, bo the top box when we opened it last week. So at that point, I make the assumption again that my queen is in the top. So I move that top box over to the side. We mark it as the old queen. And then in the bottom box, we took the swarm cells, put them on a frame, dropped them in there, and we marked the box with the yellow tape signifying that we've got a cell in here that we, we uh, now need to come back and look to make sure it's either hatched out or where exactly it is. So we have the frame that the cell was on marked. You can see the, the yellow tape right here. Lots of bees in here. So we're just going to pull that frame and see what condition those those cells are. Now, normally I wouldn't even do this. I, I would I would just, I've already made the split. I know I've got cells in there. I normally wouldn't even do this, but I just want to show you all uh, what, what we've done and how a week later. So look normally when I when I drop cells in there, that's it. I'm not going to look in this box for three weeks to make sure that I've got uh, brood in there, that my queen emerged, got mated, came back, and now is laying. So let's see what happens to the to the cells. Well, there's there's our cells. So those are those are the cells that we put in last week, and they, she still hasn't emerged. So there's actually two of them right there. So and there's another one down there as well. They just she just hasn't come out yet. So again, it really, it doesn't pay for me to go back into these boxes. So if we have boxes right now marked with yellow tape on, on the, the lids, uh, it's really, we're not even going to open those boxes up for another two or three weeks because it's just, it's just too early for them. 
because we know we have cells in there and that's really what we're trying to accomplish is to get a cell in our box so that our box will become queen right. All right, we're going to finish up here and then I'll show you what we got when we're finished. Now this is what we, we've got accomplished in this yard. In this box, we reversed the boxes even though Charlie said and I agree with him, we really didn't have to, we could have moved her off, but we reversed the boxes and put our board back in and when I come back next week, I'll, I'll take it off and move it again. This box right here, it, 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 still, it still isn't ready to be split, so it's just going to stay just as it is. This hive right here, it had the screen board in it. I didn't find any cells in the bottom box. I didn't find the queen. There really weren't enough bees, so I'm just going to leave this hive alone for right now. I'm going to leave it, the screen board on, on top of it so that I know next week when I come back that I did have a screen board in this and I rejoined the boxes. And maybe next week the board may go back in. Mm -hmm. On this side, we have an old queen that we moved off of one of our other hives, another old queen. This is, this is the box that we found emergency cells in. This is another old queen. Another box that we had emergency cells in. This box right here, we added last week, it wasn't ready. This week we put a, a dividing board in it. This box is, has got uh, emergency cells in it. This box right here, you just saw the, the cells still in it and my old queen in here. So that's, that's it for this week on, on, on this yard. I'll be back next week and all of the boxes that have singles right on them right now, next week will all have doubles on them. So we got to give these bees space. The nectar's coming in. We have to give our queen room in the in the hives to lay. And when we add our next super, those those supers will come from all of our honey supers last year. It's all drawn comb. Uh, so these boxes will be, all I have to do is clean up. The bees have to clean it up a little bit and our queen is ready to go. All right, so we're gonna go work our other yards and we'll pick it up at the end of the day showing you what we've done and what we got so far. All right, we'll see y'all at the end. Tell them goodbye, Charlie. Bye. We'll see you at the end. <laughs> Brought to you live from Good Time Charlie. He, Thanks he, for watching, keep on watching. We'll be making Ralph more. Ralph is not here. We're buddy. ready to go. Ralph is not here. <laughs> Yeah, too bad, Ralph. Every every week, people ask me, what about where's Wreck-It Ralph? Yeah, we miss him. Yeah, we do. But Wreck-It Ralph, he has a, a real job. Yeah, but he retired and then he got another job. Yeah, and he got another job so that he and his wife can travel all over Europe or they, they got an RV and now they like traveling on the weekends too. But he has promised that me and Charlie, yeah. that he's, he's not traveling much this summer and he's going to be coming with us doing uh, removals. All right, so you ready you to go? You think? Well, that's what he's told us. Yeah. Because I know, I know when Ralph is here, he really feels sorry for Charlie. I don't feel sorry for nah, him. Not at all. We, we really did pretty good today. Um, what, I, what I did was I, I just I keep track of, of the, um, the different boxes, the way the configurations of the boxes. And, and we visited three yards, our St. John yard, our St. Mary yard, and our St. Michael yard right here. We actually started a brand new yard yeah, today as well. Yeah, we did. So we took some of the hives off of the St. Um, Mary yard and brought them over to the new yard. And we still don't know the name of that yard yet. He'll tell us um, next time we see him. But we did, we brought um, a split um, from the St. Mary's yard to over there. So let me give you a, a rundown of what we were able to accomplish just in one week. Well, what I would say the bees were able to accomplish. Last week in these three yards, we wound up putting 20 double screen boards in all of the boxes. Now today, we came back, we all, and also we, we did 13 of those hives weren't even ready to have boards put in them. So now today, those 20 double screen boards have now been reduced to only six, but six of those came from the, the not ready cells. All of the boxes that we had screen boards in them, all of them 
have uh, emergency cells in them. Yeah. We, a few of them we had to go through both boxes to make sure we had to um, find our queen and then relocate some of the cells, balance them out to make sure we got a box. But we got all that stuff worked out and there was a couple of ways that we showed you all how we did it. The, the really, the biggest thing that we did was when we split today, we didn't bring any extra equipment to put another box on it. And now, after doing all of our splits, reducing our boxes just to one box, um, whether it has the old queen or the queen cells in it, we are now at 58 hives just in those these three yards. That's 58, 58 hives are ready to go. Now, we still have six of them that have double screen boards in them and eight of them that aren't even ready to be split yet. So out of those eight, probably six of them, they won't even get split this year. Maybe two of those eight will, will go, go through them. But man, that is... Oh, that it's, is a, it's a lot. It's a lot. I mean, and, and Charlie, what, what is your opinion? Now you, I don't want to brag or anything, but tell me, what about, what did you think when you were opening up these hives and seeing how many bees? It is just unbelievable. The difference between last year after we had that freeze, and then this year is just unreal. I mean, the, the, the nectar flow is on, and these bees have exploded. Yeah, they, they, it, It's just unreal. It's, I, it's, it's the, it was something to see. Yeah, it's, it's a beekeeper's dream come dream. true. That's dream it. come true. That's, <laughs> a good time, Charlie, Mr. Ed, we live in it. <laughs> oh, we live in it right now. Yeah, today would be, for a new beekeeper, he'd think that this happens all the time. <laughs> Because last year was very depressing. And and if you look, we're, we're a high pressure is sitting above us right now. It's probably right now about 65 degrees. It's wonderful. It, it's like perfect. Perfect day to be a beekeeper. So I know world famous Mike Barry, he's just like, his stomach is just turning right now because he'd love to be working his bees right now. And that's but, another one that retired and then got another job. I mean, but what's with these people? He wants, he wants to be out in his bee yard. We will not go to work. No, no, we're not no. working. No, me and Charlie. I'm done. Me too, me too, me too. I'm three. done. I'm retired. That's it. <laughs> All right, Charlie, you want to go eat? He said food. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. Well, let's do it. We have any shout outs? No. No, no shout outs? Yeah, I do, but I didn't bring their names. I'm sorry. That'll be next. Y'all gonna miss out on that million dollar prize, you know. That <laughs> Don't listen to that. Don't listen. He's telling another fib. Put all of them in the hat. Draw. <laughs> oh well. Well, I tell you what. I think this is about it. Dude, Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Oh, that's what you said. Say it again. I'm so tired. Oh, I'm so, <laughs> I'm so tired. Yeah, what? I'm tired. Okay. Thanks for watching. Keep on watching. We'll be making more. God bless Mr. Ed and my and buddy. Good time, Charlie. We're out of here until the next video. God bless everybody.